I am here to present to you uh, something about uh, LibreOffice Online. Uh, I'm Jan Holoshevsky, I work for Collabora, and it's awesome to have you all here. So, what is it LibreOffice Online? Um, Maybe you have seen the announcement uh, with the 5.3 uh, that actually now we are uh, like shipping uh, LibreOffice online. So uh, in the upstream version, it's actually two things. One is that it's a source release, uh, so you can build your uh, your uh, like packages out of that. Uh, but also there's a Docker image uh, that you can integrate into your web application and use it uh, like your for your. Uh, for your service uh, that uh, you probably are running or using or, or anything. So uh, this talk will be about how to do uh, such an integration. So first of all, uh, like LibreOffice Online looks like this. Uh, so you can, uh, you can have some text here, uh, some, some tables, some pictures. Uh, all the things that you would expect in the in the online suite. Uh, it is also possible for two people to actually connect together and work collaboratively in one document, uh, which I think is some something nice. Uh, also, you can deploy it like behind your VPN, so like uh, it is not necessary to have some some outside service in some you know whatever other people's uh, computers. You can have it all inside your um, like business or school infrastructure or anything. So how to do the integration? Oops. Sorry, I have two screens set up and I does it show anything? No. Yeah. Okay. So it is actually very easy uh, to do the integration. So you first install the LibreOffice Online and uh, well, do a bit of uh, setup so that uh, it works in your VM and uh, like you are able to see that, uh, that you are connecting to that. Then in your application uh, that, that provides the data, uh, you implement some relatively uh, trivial REST API uh, so that uh, LibreOffice Online can actually like download or upload the files. Then uh, you modify your web application so that uh, so that like uh, you put the iframe uh, that contains uh, what the user actually sees um, like into into the look and feel of your application, and then you profit. So um, <laughs> probably it was too too fast for a talk. So um, so let's uh, see what is uh, actually the WOPI protocol. Uh, WOPI protocol is. Uh, is a specification uh, that says uh, uh, how uh, how like uh, uh, how is it possible for a, an application to uh, to uh, like uh, talk to your dat data, um, get them or uh, upload them. Um, actually, one of the implementations or the first implementation of this uh, was uh, Office 365, and we are using very similar protocol as as, as them. So uh, I think to to some extent like. If there's some, some somebody who actually uh, uses Office 365 uh, in their web application, uh, we are more or less uh, dropping a replacement for that. Um, so LibreOffice Online is a WOPI client, uh, so it is something that that can uh, like create and uh, and write this data and uh, be integrated. Uh, the documentation for uh, this WOPI is uh, quite extensive, uh, so like whatever you do not hear in my talk, uh, you can see it uh, in the in the documentation and in the specification. Here is a picture how it actually looks like. So here is what the user sees. So there's there's some kind of your web, web application. So you know some. Uh, buttons and uh, you know maybe sidebar or anything and there, there then there's a place uh, for the LibreOffice online so uh, you will implement it as an iframe uh, and this iframe will on will uh, will communicate uh, with the with the server part uh, of, of LibreOffice online uh, which uh, in the WOPI uh, terms is called WOPI client, uh, which provides the actual editing. So uh, it will provide the data uh, for the iframe so that it uh, like looks like the document, uh, you can see the selections there and all these things. Uh, 
on the on the other hand, for your web application, you have to implement some part, uh, some part in the uh, on the server as well. Uh, which uh, in the WOPI terms is called WOPI host, uh, which provides the data. Uh, so this is where you will have the endpoints and the authentication part and everything that, that actually deals with the data. And the uh, WOPI client uh, will be talking to this WOPI host, uh, like independent uh, from the web application, and will download or upload, upload the data as, uh, as like uh, you are saving or if, if there's autosave, uh, how, is, how is autosaving. Uh, there's a reference implementation, uh, which uh, you can see on GitHub, uh, which uh, uh, like for the, uh, for the uh, WOPI host, uh, uh, that part is implemented in, in PHP and uh, JavaScript is used for the, uh, for, for the other parts, like for, for the iframe itself. Um, the rest endpoints uh, are uh, quite trivial, uh, so when you have a document that you need to download, uh, you will just, uh, uh, well, uh, the, the URL uh, needs to look like this. So, uh, so the WOPI, WOPI host URL, so that's the server part you need to talk to. Uh, then there can be anything random in between more slashes or anything, but then uh, like has to be a word WOPI, and then again it can continue like with anything. Uh, you can you can just define that, but then after that it has to be defined as files, then ID of the of the file, and uh, content. And access token. Access token is something that uh, makes sure uh, that uh, that um, uh, that the user actually has right uh, to access the data. Uh, so it is something that is uh, that is issued uh, by the uh, by your web application uh, that controls uh, the the access. So uh, the the um, like LibreOffice Online never asks for a password uh, because uh, because like it is not its responsibility. It really just uh, uh, uploads and downloads data, and it is the responsibility of the uh, of the of your application that actually integrates um, like LibreOffice in, uh, Online ins, uh, inside uh, that will like on one hand. Uh, tell the, the WOPI client, like, this is the access token, and then the WOPI client will talk to, to WOPI host, and, uh, like, in that case, we know that everything is authenticated and uh, everything is fine, and, like, the user has the, has the rights to, to actually, uh, actually access the document. Uploading back um, is, is very similar to that, like, again, some path uh, contents, access token, again, important part of that. Uh, check file info uh, is one additional thing that you actually have to provide uh, because uh, like we are talking about the files as IDs uh, there's no way how to how to know uh, for example the the name of the actual file so uh, like it will be very uh, like transparent here uh, so the check file info like when you uh, when you ask for that uh, again the file ID you will get the information how the file is big uh, like what's its size in bytes, um, what is the name of the file, if it is read-only, uh, so some additional information you can work with in your, uh, in your application and, uh, uh, and the online uh, has to work with that uh, information as well because uh, like for example the UI has to uh, look a bit different uh, when the document is read-only. Uh, the security token, so I've introduced that uh, just a bit already. Uh, so it is uh, there just to, um, just to uh, like leave the authentication itself on, on somebody else and that is on, on your part of, of the application. Uh, so the, the security token, um, like from the implementation point of view, can be just uh, like very random. Uh, thing uh, it can be like characters and and uh, and numbers uh, from our point of view it is uh, um, like not necessary to to have any like uh, strict form or be this big or this short anything so 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 it ju it just works and uh, uh, well of course obviously the important part is that uh, it has to be generated according to the uh, to the user. Uh, so that like two users do not have the same uh, access token and also like you can provide some time to live uh, for this token so you can make sure that uh, that you know after half an hour um, 
like the DevOps host has to provide uh, just new access token uh, so that the communication just continues. Uh, discovery service uh, is uh, like the third thing that, uh, well, one more thing that, that, that is here and that actually um, provides information about like where exactly uh, the VP host uh, is, is located. Uh, so it, um, um, it says, uh, it, it serves some kind of XML uh, that says, okay, the VP host has this URL and sits on this port uh, so that it is possible for the VP client uh, to actually like know where, where it is and, <laughs> and, um, and see, uh, see what, is, what is going on the, in there. Uh, on the JavaScript um, side of things, um, it, is, uh, it is necessary to create the iframe uh, that contains the LibreOffice Online. Here is where you will actually provide the, uh, the, the access token uh, to, to LibreOffice Online uh, via a post met method uh, so that it like, uh, can remember that and then it can, uh, it can talk to the, to the WP host itself. So, uh, we are nearly finished, uh, so how to actually um, implement it when you get to that? Because uh, I fear that uh, I've used uh, lots of terms here that, that maybe uh, were like, not easy to, uh, to consume in, in a short time. Uh, so um, basically when you are implementing this, you should do it in small steps first as well. So first of all, you do not want to connect uh, to some storage. Uh, you just want to like return some random, uh, well, not that random. Um, you just want to um, uh, return uh, some message, hello world, or anything uh, by your uh, VOP host uh, without connecting to authentication, without, uh, without connecting to your d real data. So, uh, so you will skip the, 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 the hard parts first. And you just make sure uh, that like when you open uh, your web application with the iframe that contains the uh, the 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 LibreOffice Online will see uh, the, the, the LibreOffice Online actually comes up and you will see the, the message hello world there. So these are the first three steps. So that's the rest endpoint. That just answers hello world. Uh, then uh, very small check file info that is that just says, okay, hello world.txt is the file name and it has uh, 11 bytes as the, as the length of the message and that's done. And then uh, you will implement just, just very small iframe uh, that, that posts, uh, uh, posts the query for, for this file. And then when you have it, uh, you can actually extend it and, and build on that. So, uh, so instead of uh, returning just, just random hello world, uh, you will actually like, uh, use some, some real, real data, so some real ODS file or ODT. And uh, um, then okay, uh, also you will, uh, you will of course uh, build in uh, the, the, ex uh, the um, like uh, sending and receiving the access token uh, so that like, you really are able to, to do, uh, do it safely and uh, make sure that only the user who has the access rights uh, gets the document. So that's it. Any questions? Sorry? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yes. Why do you need two machines? Two machines. Uh, so you said that the uh, Clavora Online should be in a separate machine for your own cloud. Um, well, it uh, doesn't have to be. Uh, it is just recommended because uh, because uh, okay. the uh, the LibreOffice Online uh, can uh, like. Uh, to take uh, quite a lot of resources because it does the rendering of the of the tiles and and these things, uh, so it is better that you have it on separate uh, VM or anything so that uh, like in case something goes wrong, uh, you just do not rip, uh, disrupt the the service of of providing the files uh, via other means. Uh, so it's recommended, but it uh, doesn't have to be on separate machine uh, because it sits on uh, different ports uh, than than normal like HTTP. Uh, so so it's possible to to be on one machine. It's just like convenient to have it on different ones. Yes, but it's recommended to run it on a separate domain because otherwise you can uh, run uh, JavaScript from loaded uh, Office documents mm. in the 
by sharing point tests. Yeah. So both sides thing. Yeah. Okay. If it's an, on different machine, is there any uh, specification about the, the speed of the ne network to have a good, uh, lo very low latency about the tile rendering? Uh, not really, because uh, like uh, for these two machines, uh, they just exchange files between themselves. So it is usual that uh, like for them it is local, local network. So like uh, it is fast, but even if it is not fast, like uh, it will be that the the download and upload of the of the of the files is is slower, um, but it doesn't affect the, the the editing speed or anything. The the editing itself um, like uh, depends on the on the f uh, on the speed of the machine uh, that it uh, renders the task like uh, quickly enough, and of course on the speed of the connection uh, between you as the client uh, or somebody who, who actually uh, as the user and uh, and uh, and the machine that uh, that serves uh, serves the LibreOffice online. Yes, Cor. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you aware of any open source Wopi server implementation besides this specific plugin for own cloud? So is there any anything out there already in the in um, so well, some Ruby server implementation. Yes, so uh, for, so own cloud, next cloud have them. Uh, for uh, Pydio, then uh, Colab, C file. C file. So at know, least five of them. Really, something small, dedicated, just giving this Ruby interface to local source because own cloud, they are really big series of solutions. There's so nothing really just implementing the Ruby interface. Yeah. Uh, well, not really, because uh, it's it's just the rest endpoints uh, that you have to uh, that that have to be specific to the to the solution that actually serves the files. So, like, uh, I I actually do not see how how it could be done specific. Like, uh, we could do it as uh, like having some example code, like how it should look like in uh, in PHP, how it should look like in um, in Python, in in whatnot. Um, but I. We don't have a customer that wants that yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, but it, it could serve just files on your file system or something. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It could be from yeah from some 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 file wanted system. To, but to try it out, and I was struggling at this point because I just wanted to, to test the editor, and then I found myself installing own cloud and all this big thing, and I just wanted to to throw in a document and test the editor. And yes. Yeah, so so if you if yeah yeah if you want to. Yeah. If it is uh, just just for testing, uh, you can enable uh, editing your local files uh, on the machine where it runs. Like, of course, like for some uh, public use, it is unsafe because you would be able to see the content of uh, etc uh, password or or whatever. Uh, but like for testing, uh, you just enable it uh, in the etc lowsd uh, slash as the it's XML uh, and uh, like there, there's a setting uh, enable file access uh, false uh, you change it to true and and you can immediately like uh, put uh, put any uh, any file name there and for testing I think it's enough. Okay. Yes, it's easy. It's in the online source code, so if you uh, issue the make round command. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is the next one presenting now? Okay, thank you so much.